My name is Nickel, oh Nickel, and these are 5 weird facts about Gary's Mod. If you haven't checked out the other videos on this channel, like the one that showcased a bunch of weird Fallout mods or the Overwatch Chinese ripoff edition, don't forget to check them out as well. Let's kick this off with number 1. Another sandbox mod for Half-Life 2 called JB Mod served as the inspiration for Gary's Mod. JB Mod brought the physics gun back into Half-Life 2, which enabled object manipulation. Gary Newman, creator of Gary's Mod, said that he created Gary's Mod because he was frustrated by the slow pace of development for JB Mod. The first version of Gary's Mod introduced the ability to rope objects together, a feature that wasn't available in JB Mod. In an official AMA on Reddit, Newman stated, But to be fair to JB Mod, Gary's Mod would be nothing without them. I started it out of frustration of how slow they were at developing it. Then the competition with them spurred me on more than anything else could have. The success of Gary's Mod might be attributed to competition with JB Mod, since once it was clear that Gary's Mod outranked JB Mod in popularity, the JB Mod developers began exaggerating the quality of their next update. This motivated Gary Newman to make his mod better than whatever they could come up with. In an interview with PC Gamer, he stated, They never actually released anything, but their constant thesis that it was going to be big made me so paranoid that I worked extra hard to make sure that wouldn't happen. Gary Newman was able to spend so much time working on Gmod because he was living off revenue from a dating site he ran. He originally worked for the owner of another dating site and decided to secretly make his own when he found out how much more money the owner was making in comparison. When his boss confronted him about it, he was given two options, either shut the site down or be fired. He decided to keep his dating site since it was more profitable than keeping his job. His dating site was almost entirely automated, besides customer support, so he had plenty of time to focus on Gmod. He considered Gary's mod a hobby and didn't expect that it would become profitable. When Valve asked him to consider selling it, he laughed at the idea. Months later, they asked him to reconsider, and he made the decision to sell it because it was an excuse to recode Gary's mod from the ground up. Little did he know, Gary's mod would come to sell more than 10 million copies. In April of 2011, some players began experiencing an error upon starting up Gary's Mod, which read, Unable to shade polygon normals. Following the error message, the game would crash, causing players to flood the Gmod forums looking for solutions. Players who mentioned encountering the error were banned from the game. Even Gary Newman himself tweeted out asking if anyone had gotten the error but people were continuing to be banned. They were banned because it turned out the error wasn't even a real error. Newman eventually stated that he was the one behind this and said, just enabled this error in Gmod today. It happens when you pirated it. Having fun watching people complain. It was just a way of punishing those who pirated the game. An anti-piracy error. Tornfreak.com stated, We have to agree that tackling a piracy issue in this way doesn't leave users with much to complain about. That is, if no people got the message by accident. However, we wonder if it was a good idea to permaban those who were caught from the game's forums. Giving people the opportunity to correct their mistakes and continue to participate in the community might have been an even more sensible and educational approach. Newman stated that he didn't do it to increase sales, but because, I just like giving people who paid something to be smug about. He acknowledged that the error was potentially crackable and that you can't stop pirates, but you can troll them. Olympus Games, the developer of a mod manager called Gmod, contacted Gary Newman over a branding dispute. Olympus Games had trouble introducing its brand into the modding community. In part, they believed, because Gary's mod and its shortened form Gmod was far more pervasive. Gary Newman said to VG247, they own the trademark for Gmod and have threatened to take us to court if we either don't buy it off them, along with all their domains and Twitter accounts, or post a press release pointing out that we're not affiliated, along with the permanent link on garysmod.com and on our Twitter, and force the community not to abbreviate Gary's Mod to Gmod. Gary met the legal threat head on, expressing a willingness to fight in court. He questioned Olympus's intentions by claiming that, I really don't think that people are donating to his Kickstarter to pay for lawyers. What he's referring to here is the fact that Gmod was a Kickstarter project that raised over $14,000 of their $75,000 funding goal. Soon after, the Gmod site faced a DDoS attack possibly by unhappy Gary's Mod supporters, and under pressure, Olympus recanted, stating a preference to rebrand rather than to go to court, and revising its tone to appear more community conscious. <laughs> 
A virus was anonymously created to infect the Gary's Mod servers, which forced connecting users to enter cough into the chat every 10 seconds, accompanied by a coughing sound. When they moved to a new server, all subsequent users to enter that server would also be infected. The virus also added exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point to the start of server names, which bumped the affected servers to the top of the list when sorting out servers by name. Despite being a hassle, it alerted developers to a security flaw in the source engine. The exploit was then able to be fixed before a more malicious virus could propagate the same way. Gary Newman reportedly patched the virus out of the game within the first hour of its appearance. The final fact is that pushing the like button might make something happen. It could be anything. If something did happen when you push the like button, let me know what it was down below in the comments. And now it's Loot Crate time, which is who this video was brought to you by. Loot Crate is a monthly subscription box for gamer and pop culture gear. The theme of this month's Loot Crate is the futuristic crate. Some of the items that will be included are from Rick and Morty, Mega Man, Futurama, and Star Trek The Next Generation. And one of the items that will be in there is an exclusive t-shirt that you can't get anywhere else. If you want this specific box, you have until the 19th to subscribe. And if you want to save yourself 10%, head over to lootcrate.com slash onickel and enter the code onickel to save yourself 10%. If you want to see the videos where the Gary's Mod gameplay that I used in this video came from, you can click right here. Or if you want to see another video, you can click here. Regardless if you're on mobile or PC, you can also hit the I button in the corner of the screen to be linked directly to other videos on the channel. Here's a preview of one of the previous videos on the channel. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Heh. 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 My name is Nickel, oh Nickel, and today I present to you quite possibly the most psycho Final Fantasy fan to have ever lived. I don't know how much the rest of you know about Japanese culture. I'm an expert. I'm an expert.